thank you so much for, the, for having me and thank you also for the warm welcome. It's uh, absolutely a pleasure. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And uh, as Var Jaroslav just mentioned, my name is Uke Fastino. I work in creative media and I tend to use very much a multidisciplinary approach, not only leveraging photography, video, but also a few hacks that I hope that I can eventually share with you. So I'd like to start by sharing a little bit of the, the agenda for today. We actually have a little bit of a deep dive, a short introduction between among ourselves, but also a little bit of the deep dive on the current state of content, specifically also video. But also we'll be talking very much about how to start thinking about producing very much content in-house and what are the possibilities that we have already to start telling compelling stories. Also something that um, I would like to also share very much will be very much in terms of what sort of uh, places do we have in order to find collaborations, but also find ways to actually have a community that can actually support each other. So I come from uh, Portugal, sunny Lisbon, I would say, and never very much in my wildest dreams I ever, ever thought that I would actually leave a place like Lisbon. I don't know if any of you have visited Lisbon, so let me see if there's any hands. Oh, this is beautiful. I guess you must be happy because your national team just beat Portugal. So <laughs> by now, Cristiano, I need to, to say something to Cristiano. But uh, it's one of those things. It happens. So what really got me to um, Amsterdam, I must say, there was not very much the flat landscapes, the windmills, neither the touristic attractions that Amsterdam tends to, to proclaim. But what really got me to Amsterdam was this, not football, it was actually the game of rugby. And the reason why I say the game of rugby is because rugby taught me a lot about how to shape my personality, but also a lot how to build my character. And I usually tend to use rugby as a reference because for those who don't know so much about rugby, it seems very much a chaotic game. People running from left to right, people passing the ball sideways, backwards, and then suddenly someone is kicking the ball, and then run, go, you go and chase the ball. And somehow, in a sport such as rugby, one of the things that happens is it teaches you so much about how you actually have to grow. Grow mentally, physically, but also how are you actually going to grow by failing, by actually tapping into things that you never thought that would eventually be possible, and suddenly you start to realize where are your strengths. Suddenly you start to realize what you should be doing because now you have situations in front of you where you really need to tackle. So a game or sports as an outlet, I should say, actually teaches a lot about how to make decisions, but also at the same time how to act upon them. So with that, I had the opportunity to work for these two amazing companies. Cisco, very much one of the powerhouses, not only in the field of IT, but in technology, and Nike. Nike has been a, one of those dreams come true to actually represent the company, but also to be part of their mantra. That's something that really, really resonates a lot with me, not only because I practice sports, I don't know if you guys are also a fan of sports in general, very active, really going out there, Yes or no? No, you're only here for marketing. I got it. <laughs> so it really helped me very much to, um, to tap into new things. So I would like to know something about who has, in the last week or in the past week, has recorded a video. Ooh, a few, few hands. Did you manage to share the video or did you just, you just kept it? Was the video for business purposes? Just Instagram, okay, for a lot of entertainment. So this is something that I would like to share with you. Th welcome very much to the world of content. This is very much something that is happening right now as we speak very much per minute. You can definitely just read very much the stats, four million views just on uh, YouTube alone and without even considering eventually the biggest of all, Facebook. Well, we already had Bella mentioning very much in terms of YouTube, but in terms of how many views are actually shared the date, I think this, this number is completely staggering. 
According to Promo, they actually just run a survey where they actually identified at least 50% of the people consuming products online. They were actually validating their purchase, or let's say, their buying decisions based on video reviews. So I don't know if this is something that you're actually identifying in your industry. I don't know if, as marketeers, if this is what's happening with some of your consumers, eventually even customers, even before they come to you, they actually check on your social proof, or even if you have some sort of verification or some video interacting. I don't know if this is very much your case, but this is what's already happening in this echo space at this moment. Which leads us to think on the following. With so much content, how can we actually differentiate ourselves? Or if you put content, even if it's just for Instagram, how do you actually differentiate the content that you're putting out there with so many signals, with so much information actually just overwhelming you? According to a recent research, the brands, they usually tend to cultivate their spaces where their audiences are, they go one or two steps deeper. They try to understand very much the inner beliefs of their, very much their followers. Not only their consumers, but at the same time, they try to influence as much as possible that they are doing the right thing for the people that usually tend to follow, let's say, these brands. The other thing that tends to happen is there is a need for... Um, uh, I would say, embracing very much talent. And in this case, I would, like, I would like to consider you very much talent, the reason why you took the time to be here today, not only to learn, but also to share, to connect, to get informed, but also to very much embrace technology, to try to find out what are the latest tactics that are actually working for other people, what are very much the latest hacks, I think it was an aided word that was just mentioned here uh, recently, so all of this is giving us very much some insights in terms of what's really resonating with audiences that tend to follow brands. And the latest research that I'd like to share is that according to Growth Tribe, once again, Growth Tribe being mentioned in this floor, 50% uh, of consumers online that are actually looking for authenticity. So if you're thinking about creating video, if you're thinking about creating content, are your content authentic for the people that are actually consuming, for the people that are actually following? It's something that usually is very considered by your audience. So the other thing that is also mentioned, part of this very much uh, research, is that how trustworthy are you as a brand? So now this leads me to how do we actually cut the noise and how do we actually make you the relevant party in this mix. We start by understanding very much what makes a brand meaningful. First of all, we try to make it sure that it's functional in terms of what kind of impact do they actually deliver on the promise that they have. Also, something that it's needed to be seen by brands is also to make sure that it's also personal. And they also embrace the sense of community. They know how to bring you and make you feel special in terms, not only in terms of social status, but also of giving you this sense of belonging. The only reason I use Coca-Cola here is just because I recently just watched videos from Coca-Cola across different geographies, all the way from South America, advertisement, pure advertisement that they had, and Europe, Asia, I think I believe I already mentioned Africa. No, not yet. South America, Africa. And what I've noticed is they always have people drinking Coca-Cola completely smiling. So they give you this sense of happiness. No matter what happens in their videos, it's always people drinking their soda, but also at the same time having this sense that they are sharing a fun moment. It's something that really you can feel, not only in the head. So whenever you actually experience drinking a Coca-Cola, you might relate to this. And I would like to bring very much to what I've actually learned at Nike. This has been eventually one of the biggest lessons that I've learned being working for them, for their European uh, headquarters, based uh, close to Amsterdam, actually in Ilversum. And um, beyond the fact that Nike now is very much a big brand, 
beyond the fact that they actually have access not only to, um, I would say, to consumer insights, to amazing product development, to amazing contacts with global agencies. I think there's one thing that actually brings back to what people eventually that don't have so much of the big budgets or they don't have the resources that a company such as Nike, they can actually start to embrace and start embedding in their own culture. And it goes by this. Nike has this amazing ability to focus on key sporting moments. Not only the Olympic Games, not only the World Cup, but really moments where they know they can actually support their athletes. They actually glorify most of their athletes almost like gods. It's not by any occasion they're able to, to visit their campus if that's in, here in Europe, in Amsterdam, or even in the US, and you actually have status of athletes. I don't know any other companies that actually they build very much statues out of their main ambassadors or even for some of their main icons. I don't know if you have any sort of comparison to this. The other thing that they also like to actually bring very much to life is very much the sense of you belong to this community. You too can also achieve great things in life. So they give you this sense of belief. So in one side you have Nike that actually gives you this sense of believing and the other side you actually have Coca-Cola that gives you this sense of feeling. So if you match these two, this is what you start to have. You start to have inspirational stories that actually will drive you to take action or to just be part of it. This is actually Steve Prefontein. Steve Prefontein was definitely eventually the first face that Nike ever used or some, I would say, an athlete that definitely has embedded the spirit that Nike has. Ambitious, young, back in those, in those days, but also extremely determined to go and just do it things in their own way. You can actually try to research a little bit what is his own story. He actually ended up dying tragically, so it's one of these sad stories, but he gave it all. Not only Steve was an amazing athlete because the way he would attack his races, he would not go out there and just try to play it safe. He would go immediately from the get-go and get the crowds completely wild. You had full stadiums completely cheering for the, his runs. So suddenly, these stories, they start to travel. Oh, here it comes. The great Steve Prefontaine. He's going to be in town. He's going to compete against our main athlete. And then suddenly, which shoes is he wearing? <laughs> the flying Nikes. So nowadays, what you're having right now, it's very much these stories right now are going beyond just being a little bit just inspirational. They are going into other areas. As I've mentioned before, what makes brands meaningful? They are functional, they deliver on their products and their promise. So the products and the service, they are fulfilling that need. Also, they are personal. They make you feel that you're absolutely special. And at the same time, they are collective. So right now, you start to see the sense of belong to the movement, support, make a stand. And I think this is one of the biggest abilities that Nike has to actually just build these emotional stories that tap in to our psyche. We feel it. So I'm not here just to endorse for Nike because right now I have my own practice, so <laughs> let me carry on. <laughs> But this is what they're able to do. They break completely the silos. So suddenly, you have consumers, they want to actually buy your product because they want to feel part of it. Also, with your main partners or people that actually want to redistribute most of the product that they want to bring, they also want to be part of you. They want to also follow. They want to also be meaningful with what they're doing with their time and with their lives. So I hope that also as marketeers, you are taking that approach, that you're no longer just looking for a way to just get a sale. You want to sell an idea and not products. So this brings us very much what is video has to do with all of this. I get it. Video must be one of the most powerful ways to actually have the sense that we know each other, that we actually we can see how the person moves, how the person talks, how the person actually acts, and we can sense it. Is it being genuine or is it just being an act? With audio, even podcasts or even with radio, you actually have an idea of a person until you meet her and then you say, ooh, what's this? 
not quite the same person that I was expecting to see here today. But with video, I have this ability to actually get across way faster, quicker. So the way to get started, it actually, it doesn't matter. The reason why you need to act, you need to have a strategy, fine. And I use the word need depending on your circumstances. Depending if you have the big budgets as Nike today, but also Nike didn't start it with the big budgets. They also had to go scraping and finding ways, pivoting and taking action. So, building very much an overall strategy, you have to focus. You can't go out there and just try to be all over the place, trying to do all sorts of things. Even if you're in a corporate position, you're giving a budget, and within that budget, you better make sure that you're hitting your goals. Otherwise, you might find yourself a, with a few awkward conversations. So one of the things that you'll be looking very much is to define what kind of goals are you trying to reach even before you start to create any kind of content. Out of this, you would like also to understand if you are going to use video, what kind of message do you actually want to bring? And the best way to actually look at this is to actually start looking at with who do I want to connect, who is going to help me, and right now start glorifying them. Start putting them as a focus because they are going to help you and your company and what sort of campaigns you might be managing at this moment to get there. The other thing that you also want to be doing is to actually find a way to just be clear, be concise, be direct with your message, and also try to always to include at least an actionable call to action and close with questions. Try always to find more because pretty soon once you start creating your content, and enticing potential audiences. You want to know what they think about what you have to say. You want to know what sort of questions they have, but if you don't ask, most likely you will not get the response that you're looking for. The other thing that I would like to, to mention is that attention span, it's not, it's not something that is gonna be there really claiming for most of your videos. So you have to find this way of crafting your content that immediately not only grabs attention, but above all, can connect. So as you can see, the time spans across these different channels, it's not very big. So suddenly you need to start thinking about what type of content can I actually create that is within my reach, within my resources, that I can actually start taking action and start getting responses from audiences. So I like to always to, uh, to give a little bit this overview, the reason why if you are very much working on a startup, you don't have a lot of time to go around and playing around with video, but you can start to give some sense of focus. What would you like to produce? My best take on this is the following. If you are testing very much your minimal viable product, go around and try to have some document documentation on this. Try to have some recording on your sprints. If it's for two weeks or if it's for one week, Try to have some sort of recordings. Try to find somebody that actually feels comfortable just documenting. This is what I want to test. This is your assumption. This is the results that I'm getting. Try to get that on video. You don't need to be sharing by now, but you start to get a little bit into the process of using video as a way of documenting your journey. If you're very much on a scale-up stage, you're looking very much just to speed up. You want to know what works, you want to try out, you want to reach out to other partners, try to document that process. You want to reach out to people that most likely, they want to help you. Try to have at least some, a few interviews. What got you in the first place to collaborate with us? Try to have that as a video content that you can also use, and we'll see very much in which stage. If you're very much in a corporate situation, and if you're looking to, if you're busy very much with your digital transformation, Try to, in this case, start documenting what sort of customers are you actually serving. Companies like WeTransfer, even Fujifilm, and even Booking.com, they are running series, episodes on consumers or customers that actually use their services. So if you do have that possibility and to actually, I would say, even hire a production team, try to run those because this is what's actually resonating the most is a type of video content that 
people are feeling more compelled to follow not only brands, but also to be associated with their products and services. And lastly, it's very much, if you have the possibility to start already from the beginning, being engaged in some sort of social activism, try to make a stand. We just saw the example from Nike, completely inspirational, and now moving way beyond giving a voice to their athletes, not only from their point of view, but supporting them. They have something to say. They're not just some people to entertain us on the pitch. They have something that they stand for and they want to fight for it, even if it means losing it all. So this is very much my take. So once you start to have your goals properly defined, you have a script to what you would like to say, this is what I usually like to to give us very much as a framework. It's very much, who are you? What are you doing? If you have values, this is all things that you can actually just record, I'm just gonna say with some proper lighting or simple lighting, with your phone, mobile phone, and with a little bit, let's be a little bit picky with audio, let's make the audio quite reasonable. And the reason why I say something like this is just because you have the, pos the possibility to actually reach out Maybe to your CEO and just ask him, do you have time? I would like to know where are we standing. I would like to know if you could actually just provide me an interview. I'd like to know what do you think about the company that we're actually running and what could you say to our potential prospects, but also to our vendors, to our partners. The other thing is try to interview also a few of your colleagues, if possible. This will already start to generate you a little bit of content that you can later on decide, am I happy with the quality of this? Am I happy with the way it's coming across? But one thing I'll ensure you for sure, it will be authentic. And now you have the possibility to decide to share it or not. I have a few cases that I would like to, to share. Flipbase, it's very much a video platform focused on recruitment where you can actually a video interview your hirees and suddenly people, uh, uh, different people that had contact with uh, the, the people applying for the jobs, they can actually provide feedback on the video interview that they've done. And one of the things that they actually do in their company, they actually give an entire overflow about on, all on video, but how, how it is to work at this company, uh, v uh, Flipbase, but also what kind of environment do they have? What kind of colleagues do they actually express what do they like in their own roles. So once they need to start reaching out to potential clients, this is exactly what clients will be looking. They'll be landing very much on their own page and start seeing the value proposition and immediately having a feeling, I know who the CEO is. I know what kind of stuff that they have. I know exactly the mission that they have, all based on video. Oribi.io, it's even a better case. The reason why First of all, Oribi.io, it's very much focused on uh, digital analytics. So they're trying to simplify data visualization to be a little bit way more insightful, but also actionable than Google Analytics. It's very much their mission. But the moment you land on their own page, what happens is you have their value proposition, all their benefits, and then suddenly you have a background, a video playing on the background showcasing the contrast between using one tool and the other. So immediately you have an idea, not only by reading what's on top or overlay of the video, but immediately by seeing these images, you can feel immediately, well, this is something that I would love to try. If they really promise, if it really works, let me see if I can actually stop using Google Analytics and start using Oribi. That's very much something that they promise. On building an audience, NFL films, I don't know if you're very much familiar with uh, American football. The reason why I use NFL films as one of my biggest references is because most football federations right now are using this approach. NFL films, way back, maybe in the years 50, they started to document the entire American football game. Not only from the players, the coaches, the fans, the supporters. Nowadays, they have series. It's always the same story that they're trying to portray. Most of the times, people that struggle, people that have difficulties, always on that emotional level. It's never about how great the game is supposed to be with the pets. Look at the products that we have to show. No, they put the people first, and they actually showcase that emotional journey. 
Jim Shark. I don't know it's very much uh, familiar to some of you. I don't know if you know the brand Jim Shark. It's a quite established brand, very much in the, in the field of sport and fitness. This is very much the founder, Ben. Most likely doesn't even have more than 10 years of existence. And it's one of the best cases on how he started to document his entire journey from the moment he was actually just trying some, I won't say bodybuilding, but at least sport and fitness clothings. And then the moment he actually starts sharing this with a group of people and friends that he knew and how they started to endorse for him. Then suddenly, they are the ones actually creating videos, sharing with their friends, and then also with their following. And then suddenly, he has all of these properly documented in one of his initial videos, but also he just managed to do a documentary describing the entire journey from moving from a small office, small scale up, or even startup, I would say, to right now, just guide you completely through different floors and describing what sort of teams is he actually building. They are completely taking the world based not only on video, but also based on the power of referring. So, and with this, you start now to land into a digital mantra. A mantra where you want your content, in this case, most likely video, to actually do the following, to actually get people to like you, also to follow you, get to trust you very much at the end. But what this digital mantra actually showcases is the amount of touch points that most likely people will take until they start to actually feel inclined to buy from you, or even to start to follow through your call to action, or even to start to actually start engaging in a way that most likely you're ready to do business. So now, how do we start with all these productions? How do we actually start with this video notion of what type of video has actually resonated? Where are my, my audience? What are the possibilities? What are the, actually the resources that I have within my power in order to start going out there, start recording videos, and starting to get responses? So one of the things that I like always to mention once start looking at generating leads, it's very much on the length of the videos, which is very much what my next slide will present. It's very much, if you're just getting started, we need to be very much aware of the channels where we would like to start enticing people to start following us, but also how lengthy are very much the type of content that we're actually producing. So, as marketeers, we're also like to very much consider having a little bit of structure just to know very much what type of content can we produce, but at which stages of the funnel are we actually talking about. This is an example from Growth Tribe. I still believe they can still be a little bit more dwelt because it doesn't capture all types of videos because it depends if you're a startup, a scale-up, or even a corporate. It depends on your capabilities at this stage. So I strongly believe that the next slide actually presents a little bit of more compact idea of on all sorts of videos that you can actually start considering. Still believe that this slide can still be a little bit overwhelming for some of us in this room, depending if we're just getting started or if we don't have, let's say, the big budgets as some of the big brands usually tend to display. So my take on this is the following. Like to keep it very much a simple Flow. This is very much based on a case study that was also shared by 23.net. And they mentioned that at least 70% of the people that will interact with your heads or at least with the content that you have, they will actually just claim that they've seen it, but only 40% will actually be able to follow through your call to action. This is already the potential. If I look at the conversion rates, by the time that you get to the decision-making process, Video is already leveraging way more than most of the other channels. The other thing that I would like to mention, if you're just getting started, please pick at least one or two videos per different stage of the funnel, which now gives me the opportunity to start talking a little bit about the benefits of creating video. I usually tend to 
document quite a lot of interviews. I run into a few productions trying to create promos, also at the same time trying to also create uh, short movies for companies that usually they like to promote not only their products but also their staff, but it's always on this emotional side, trying to find a way to actually connect with audiences that they have an immediate response. And I like to always to mention if you start at least with interviews, the possibility of actually exporting some of the frames from the, those videos into to small, small um, pieces of... Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, just lost my thought for a moment. Actually just exporting very much those frames into some posts and really just using the quotes of what was mentioned in an interview, you start already to generate very much small blog posts. But since we're talking about videos, one of the things that you can also do with exporting those frames is creating dynamic slideshows. Once again, you still have your main piece of the video, there can still be a long one if it's an interview, way beyond the two minutes, six minutes. But now you start to use small blog posts to actually use it on Facebook or even on Medium. You can actually use it as a picture. But also you start to run dynamic slideshows that you can use also as a promo, as a, tailor, as a trailer to bring people to your main piece of content, which is your video interview. The other thing that you can also do with video is to actually export the audio and we've mentioned already about transcribing, but also translating into different languages, and immediately you have the possibility to use it as one episode for the podcast. The other thing that you also have that also helps you by having audio from a, from a video is also to, in this case, uh, I'm sorry, audio not, uh, extract the audio, but then Use this transcribe and you can or immediately have a piece of a blog just with your text of what was discussed in the video interview. And if this is not enough, I would like to share very much some of the tools that already can help you. If you're a blogger, if you're very much a content writer, you can actually use Lumen5 in video. Some of these tools that can immediately transform most of your text into videos. You can also modified some of the videos that it actually allows you to use with your own content. So you can modify some of the videos that actually have that, or even some of the, I would say, stock footage that they allowed you to, to use from that side. If you're not so much into blogging or even copywriting, and you're looking to a quick way to start making promotional videos, you can actually use a tool called Promo that actually gives you a tremendous um, variety of templates to start running your own advertising. I like to mention Dub. The reason why I like to mention this, this tool is because it gives you an entire customer journey in terms of how you can start to communicate using video, landing pages, where you can actually just have a video enticing your entire audience really to just welcome. Thank you so much for um, landing not only on this page. We are um, very much keen to know more about you and uh, I just lost my thought for a moment. And at the same time, gives you the possibility also to communicate also on, uh, on LinkedIn with small videos responses. So one of the things that you can also do with Dub, I'm still on Dub, is to actually just communicate using videos. Rather than sending just an email or even creating a, a newsletter, you can just use videos for that purpose. The good thing about, or the positive thing that I like to mention about Dub is that it gives you immediately all the metrics based on the reach, but also how many people are actually interacting with the videos that you are creating. The last tool that I like to mention is very much 23.net, and one of the benefits that they eventually very much, they promote very vividly, is that they would like to make sure that all your digital assets or all your videos are all stored in one platform. The reason why they don't like to endorse very much the advertisement that goes on other channels. Sometimes if you go into YouTube, you create your own video, you might activate AdSense to start generating some money, and then suddenly your audience is being bombarded with, uh, with advertising that most likely is not relating with your theme or with your content. So that right now brings me how do you actually build an audience? Now that we cover very much how to create content, how to very much start looking on how to connect 
very much into an emotional level, what to say in those videos, what type of videos can we actually start considering creating. We look very much on how to build an audience. The best tools that I have for this is very much AdZola that based on your keywords, based on your niche, based on the topics that your industry is actually playing a major role, you get the, the opportunity to identify where are the channels that have the most subscribers or even the channels that have the most relevant, I would say, influencers. So this gives you immediately the possibility to start tackling, tackling very much social profiles for the following. Top body, TubeBuddy and uh, Vid IQ, they give you the possibility to optimize as much as possible, not only in terms of tags, not only in terms of the categories that you'll need to be uh, very much promoting or even creating your videos, but at the same time, gives you a lot of references in terms of what other similar audiences that you might not be considering would be worth start tapping into it. Phantom Buster, possibility to start web scraping very much social media profiles all across LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even YouTube. So one of the benefits of using scraping is actually to start building your own lists. And the benefit there is to actually build your own lists, upload it as a custom list, and from there start reducing very much the cost of acquisition on some of these famous channels. If this is not enough, for you to actually start finding ways to collaborate, I'd like to, to, to mention that 23 usually runs video marketing meetups. You can actually reach out to them and see what the possibilities are for them to host eventually a meetup here in Kiev. One of the benefits here is also to actually involve people, get to know people that are already in this field, not only sharing tips, but also they might have some resources, some other uh, people that eventually can also, also help you to start creating videos for your own benefits. Daisy, it's a very much a creative platform, a little bit more on the artistic side, but it's constantly one of these platforms that allows you to actually place, I would say, uh, place very much the, um, I wouldn't say a post, but you can actually claim and start asking for people to collaborate with you. So if you're looking for people that are very much involved in video production and you would like to tap into them, this would be one of the communities that I would refer so that they can actually start to help you with their cameras, with some of their gear, with some of their expertise, even writing eventually a script. And then from there, you can already get yourself going. So last but not least, I would love to let you know, let's start celebrating very much stories. Let's start engaging in the most emotional way as possible. And let's glorify everyone that we want to serve. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. What I thought was like complicated things are not that complicated, right? And if something looks over. difficult to implement, there are a bunch of ways to do it fast cheap, not investing a lot of time and money, and kind of do the hacking. I don't like word hacking, but you you're changing my mind. So do we have questions here? The previous slide? The previous slide? Oh, ah, okay. previous. Do, can I go back? <laughs> uh, well, we'll share it. No worries. No worries. So questions. Yeah, there is one. Okay, you can use mine. Uh, thank you for the talk. Thank I'm Lisa from Flawless Lab. First, I would love to give an example about working with video content. Uh, startups usually don't have money to execute that in-house. So one good example is to go to conference and to provide to do a video shooting, to record talks, then to share it on your blog, to do a post from that. By this way, you do two things. Firstly, you provide video content for your audience. Secondly, you engage with community. And more important, you engage with opinion leaders, because all people on the stage are usual opinion leaders. So sharing yeah. their videos and stories on your blog can engage followers of those, that opinion leader. So it's a cheap way to, um, to, to work with video content. And I'm curious to know, um, how does Nike uh, choose opinion leaders to work with? 
how do they engage with popular uh, sportsmen, how do they invite to do interviews, how, what intensities uh, uh, they provide. In terms of value that they provide or the way they find their, uh, the people to, with who they want to collaborate with? Well, interesting both. How do they choose people to invite and what do they propose them to participate? Sure. There's always this mission within uh, companies such as Nike. They want to always reach out within their community who are the most influencer, influential athletes that they actually have and what sort of um, reach and engagement do they actually display. So if you think immediately about the Cristiano Ronaldo, first of all, he was not so happy with the result of the football match. So you can immediately start to tap in into people that if they have a, a voice, something to say, and they're following, it's completely just following everything that they do, you can immediately see that that's the best way to actually, for a company such as Nike, just deal with the main assets, just deal with the main athletes, and in a certain way, the rest will follow. So. Other than money, do they offer anything else? I think right now they're looking very much to, a, to an outlet. They're trying to see athletes that actually stand for something, and it was not so long ago, the company used to be very neutral, especially in, very, in terms of political scene, political support, and right now with what happened with Colin Kaepernick and even with uh, Rapino, it's, it's, it's a turning point for companies. It's a turning point to be uh, very much supporting social activism because their entire audience is asking for that. Their entire following is supporting athletes, and for Nike it will be very simple. If they are not supporting an athlete, what are the chances that they would actually sign with the competition? They most likely could support them. So for them, they will need to be very much listening to their athletes and the stands that they make, but also to the audience who are they actually following. Okay. No money, no contracts about Nike, no... Uh, what kind of videos requirements is from uh, Cristiano? Is he too crazy? No, he's not crazy. I actually have a, a funny story about uh, back in the days, a friend of mine he used to work with the sports marketing department, and uh, not going to mention names, no, no, not teams, and, and he received a request from, um, <laughs> from, let's say, from the company, from his boss, and he told, we need X player to use this boot. We are about to launch this campaign, and we need them to use it. So what happened was <laughs> they had the Champions League final within a week. So he has to fly to where the, the athlete is actually training. So what happens? He tries to convince the athlete, we need you to try this boot right now because we're about to debut this and you're going to be in the biggest stage. And he knew him well. He knew him from, from years. They have developed a relationship between sports marketing, agent, towards athletes. It's almost like a Jerry Maguire story. And what happened was the athlete told him, no way, I'm superstitious. Listen, this is the boots that I've been wearing half of the season. There's no way I'm going to change this right now. So he said immediately to them, he said to the athlete, listen, if you don't wear this, my career is over. Career is gone. Inside Nike, no chance. Uh, the sports marketing agent didn't knew if you were actually were wearing the, the boot until the day of the event. Champions League final. If I still recall, the match went 1-1, and then suddenly the team of the athlete actually managed to score one goal. Do you know who scored the goal? The athlete with who he was, he was talking. Do you know which boot was he using? The one that he's been using for six months or the new boot that he says, there's no way I'm going to adapt within a week and go out there and help you to launch this campaign. Which one of the boots do you think he was using? The old one? Ooh, boy, 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 boy. Oh, come on, new ones? The old one. Come on, we talk about storytelling. The new one. <laughs> it was the new one that he was using. So... This is just to show you very much, if you do not cultivate that relationship, there would be no way that you would say, no, 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 no. I have a Champions League final. I have to go out there and really do my best. He ended up scoring the winning goal 
And the boot that he was wearing was the newest boots that they wanted to launch. This is the power of brands. So, this is my story. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.